going on adult champions. Usually I'm talking about young champions, the youth. But in this video, I'm speaking to adults who might have clicked on this. Crazy title, Why Does My Teenage Son Hate Me? I'm Harding Eisen Bowman from PartnerWithGreatness.com. We're a youth development platform uh, headquartered here in Lexington, Kentucky. Reaching out across the airways to serve youth uh, wherever they may be and also serve families, equip, empower, inspire, encourage, all that good stuff. So I had this hunch about... Uh, about, about this Google search that I did. Why does my teenage son hate me? And I just felt, especially with the pandemic going on and the increased social isolation and the uh, disrupted schedules and parents having to become overnight homeschool teachers and just worried about paychecks and all that stuff. We're, we've been flipped upside down, right? Uh, and on top of that, just the normal, you know, what is normal when it comes to raising kids. I've got a six week old uh, daughter, my firstborn back there in the bedroom. She's like, she won't get off of us. You know, she's just this little barnacle, this beautiful little nugget of joy. She likes to sleep just like draped on you. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's totally hit or miss if she will actually stay asleep for her naps and resting if she's not like stuck to a human body. So, uh, you know, it's like, uh, what is normal? I don't know anymore. My my life is in shambles. So I'm just six weeks into this, and it's a girl. So in this video, we're talking about teenage uh, boys, young men, whatever stage you think they're at. So I'm sure it just gets more and more uh, wild and wooly as you go along. But just uh, all the all the challenges that go along with parenting, and and you know the testosterone, the male adolescence, and you know, I know when I was a teenage son, it seemed like a lot of times I would just go out of my way, just perversely out of my way to make things more dramatic and complicated than they needed to be. And, uh, you know, I don't know how my parents survived that sometimes. <laughs> but uh, so I typed into Google, why does my teenage son, and I just wanted to see what the predictive text, you know, how it finishes the question for you. Uh, what that would come up with and, and you know my heart broke when I saw one of the most common results and of course it may be you know there could be some conspiratorial thing going on where you know Google wants to influence the questions you ask maybe maybe not but one of the most common top hitting questions uh, ends of the question why does my teenage son was hate me uh, so I thought man that's really sad um, mo that so many people that this would be such a popular question. So let me, let me speak to this. Let me go out here with the, you know, the gut intuition I have, first of all, in this video, this first video of the series, I'm just gonna be trying to relieve a little bit of the emotional pain that you might be feeling and uh, get you in a mental and emotional state where you're gonna get the most out of the rest of the video series. So, you know, first question is, uh, <clears throat> Do you think it's really true, uh, like ultimately, or just true temporarily? Maybe your teenage son does, you know, think he hates you right now. So maybe, or may, may he may or may not actually believe that right now. That may or may not be, you know, reality for you guys right now. Um, think back to the times when you had joy and peace and love and understanding uh, in the relationship with your son. Um, you know, based on those times in the past, do you think it could ever be possible that you would have, you know, mutual respect and, and mutual, you know, wanting to spend time together or communicate clearly and, and just have a foundation of peace, honesty, respect, and love? Do you think that could ever happen again? I, I think if you base it on, you know, what has come before could come again and, and just go to those joyful times in the past, I, I think you can believe that it could happen again or maybe even be better than it ever was before you know add a little bit of maturity a little bit of perspective and life experience and wisdom um, onto that foundation of, of the childhood there and I think it could get even better than it ever has been before so just you know look to the past to count your blessings and found and root yourself in a foundation of hope and belief that the future could even get brighter than, than it ever has been also um, I want you to ask, you know, why does it bother you so much? Let, let's say, let's say it is true right now. Um, 
It may be based on things that are in your control. It may be based on things that are not in your control. It may be partly your fault, maybe partly his fault. But uh, either way, you know, just blank slate question here. Why does it bother you so much? Really start to unpack that question. You know, what, what do you think it suggests about you? What do you think it suggests about him? Why does it bother you so much? Okay. And also, uh, I want to end on this. What pressures or guilt do you think you're living under right now? Um, if, if you think your teenage son hates you, it, how is that stacking on top of the misery that you might already be feeling from other areas of your life where you're harboring guilt and pressure and stress? Um, your shoulders are probably tight right now. You're probably not breathing very deeply. Uh, you may not be spending much time in prayer or, you know, Think, being thankful for the things you do have that are going well in your life? Have you gone into a cycle, a, a downward spiral of letting stress, fear, and, and uh, hopelessness rule your life? So how, how is this feeling about your teenage son stacking onto that? And then how is your feeling about your teenage son giving uh, new, new uh, spilling over into other areas and creating feelings of stress and pressure in other areas of life that may not have been there before. You see what I'm saying? I, I want you to break that cycle emotionally and psychologically and say, where is the guilt and the pressure in my life coming from? And, and how is this new thing about my teenage son, or maybe it's an old thing about your teenage son, how is that playing into it? Um, so I think if you go there um, and get ready with, with some answers there, maybe just in the back of your mind. I think the rest of the series will uh, give you a lot more value. So I'm, I'm really excited to be doing this. And I know it's kind of a heavy, weird, dense topic that's not fun and flashy and sexy and easy to think about. But I think this is a much needed thing. It's a critical time. Uh, you know, what kind of generations are we creating here? You know, as parents, what, what future society are we creating here? And, I, I don't like the idea that I'm not doing everything in my power to sort of get myself out of the way when necessary and, and also lead with courage and, and, and uh, you know, self-forgiveness and just lead when I need to lead uh, in order to make that next generation the best it can be. So I uh, hope this has been helpful. Uh, the one, one of the, well, I'll end on this. One of the, uh, one of the reasons that the question, you know, why does my teenage son hate me might be coming up is because by, by characteristic, you know, by personality trait, you might be more neurotic than other people in your life. And my hunch there is I might be talking to the females, maybe the single moms. When I say that there's a branch of psychology called psychometrics. And I've been studying this at, it deals with these the big five traits they call it. There's five personality traits, their characteristics, and apparently it's very stable and scientifically measurable and, and verifiable. It checks out, you know, and you can you can give people questionnaires or look at their choices and their thoughts and and measure these these uh, characteristics. Uh, they include uh, openness and creativity, disagreeableness. Um, and neurotic neuroticism so so some people are more neurotic than others and i don't know if you've really thought that about yourself before and it's not like oh you, you know shame you neurotic person like why are you so weird and freaky and having these stupid thoughts of you know that you can't do anything about anyway it's it's not it's not something to be ashamed of or be judged on but it's just a reality of you know biochemically in your brain and it's and it's more typical among females statistically higher you know women are more neurotic than men according to psychometrics uh so just maybe as we wrap up on today's video just think that you know hey you know this might be bothering me partly just because i'm a neurotic person and it's hard for me not to dwell on and get caught in that broken loop tape of negative thoughts where you sort of get stuck and ruled by the, the negative possibilities and, and find it difficult to shift your thinking over to, you know, positive and hope and belief and, yeah, positivity. So that's what I'll end on today. Much love to you guys. Can't wait to see you on the next video. This is Harding Eisen Bowman from partnerwithgreatness.com. We'll see you in the next one.